Hey guys, Yu-Gi-Oh! Prodigy here, and I'm coming at you again with another deck profile. Uh, a lot of you guys like my other deck profile on Exodia's. So today I want to do a different deck profile, more of a meta deck, I would say, and that's on Infernities. Infernities are a really good deck in my opinion. They go super fast, and once you establish board control, you pretty much got game. So yeah, let's get into the deck profile. Alright, so we play 15 monsters. For the Infernities, we play 3 Infernity Archfiend uh, because that's an obvious choice. Infernity Archfiend is the best Infernity card out there. Basically, if you top deck him with no cards in your hand, you can special summon him and you can search out any, any Infernity card from your deck and add it to your hand if you have no cards in your hand. And he's an 1800 beater. Then we play 3 Infernity Necromancers. Uh, this card's you have to run him at 3 as well. Pretty much you summon him and then he switches to defense like summoner monk. And if you have no cards in your hand, you can special summon one infernity monster from your graveyard. Except uh, infernity necromancer. So pretty much you summon him and you special summon uh, archfiend. And then you'll, able, you'll be able to get archfiend's effect to search for another card. Then we play 3 Stygian street patrols. Um, I know that a lot of people like to play 2. But I find that 3 is like uh, really good because a lot of times when you... Infernities is all about setting up your early game. If you have a really bad hand early game, if you have a lot of monsters, then that's a problem. So by having 3 Stygian Street Patrols, by sending them to the graveyard, you're able to go through a lot of your monsters in your hand that are clogging up your hand. So this helps speed up your process to the point where you want to get. And then we play two Armageddon Knights and a Dark Greffer. Uh, the Armageddon Knights are to mill whatever you need to mill. Um, you have a lot of options on milling. You can mill uh, Stygians or you can mill Archfiends or Necromancer depending on your situation. Uh, I play two because I play quite a few monsters compared to other builds. And the Dark Greffer is here if my hand is full of monsters and you need to discard a a dark to get your play starting. Um, the reason why I like having two Armageddon Knights and one Greffer is because Greffer late, later on in the game is uh, more useless because you can't ha you don't have those cards to discard to activate his effect. While Armageddon Knight is always live when you summon him. And then we play two Summoner Monks. A uh, really good card helps uh, get rid of cards in your hand and special summons. Uh, any level 4, so you could either bring out your Dark Greffer to get rid of more cards in your hand and more uh, dumping, or your Armageddon Knight, or your Infernity Archfiend if you have no other cards in your hand. Then, yeah, Summoner Monster is really good. And then finally, for the last monster, we play 1 Archfiend Iris. It's a really good card. Um, basically, if it's sent to the graveyard by card effect or by battle, um, it could be sent to the graveyard. Its effect can be activated by Armageddon Knight, Foolish Burial, um, stuff like that. Then you could use its effect to search out any uh, inf Archfiend card. So you could either get your Infernity Archfiend or your Field Spell. We play 13 spells and that consists of 2 MSTs. Uh, 2 is just fine, you gotta clear those back rows to make sure your plays are safe. Uh, you could play 3 by do side the third one. So 2 is just fine. Then we play 2 Instant Fusions. Uh, instant Fusions help uh, get your Lavavo Chains out, your Dire Wolves out, whatever you need to get your plays rolling. And yeah, it's a pretty good card. And you can also feed it for Summoner Monk if you don't need it. Then we play 2 Transmodifies. I like Transmodify because you could use it on your say your dead necromancer at that moment to bring out your archfiend or you could get um, you could dump your iris for an archfiend though they're usually the normal cases but yeah transmodify is in there to help get your plays rolling a lot of these cards are to get your plays rolling so you could get significant advantage over your opponent then we for the one ofs we play one infernity launcher this card is probably the Beast deck, the Beast spell card in this deck, it's so good. Um, its effect is that once per turn you could discard one Infernity card from your hand to the graveyard. So if you have a lot of dead Archfiends or something in your hand, 
uh, this helps get rid of your hand as well as if you have no cards in your hand you can destroy this card and you can special summon up to two infernities from your graveyard so you would want to bring out one Archfiend and one Necromancer because you, if you bring out two Archfiends um, you can only get one of their effects so by bringing out one Archfiend and one Necromancer that's your best option then we play one zero max uh, some people play this card some people don't I like it because it helps bring most of the time you would want to bring back your Necromancer unless you need to clear the entire board then bring back your Archfiend and it will destroy every monster under 1800 but I use this um, to bring back Necromancer so you could bring back your Archfiend because if you do use this to bring back your Archfiend then it will miss timing and you won't get um, Archfiend's effect then we play one Foolish Burial because it's so good you could dump your Stygians, you could dump your Aeris um, yeah then we play one Reinforcements of the Army to bring to search for your Greffer or your Armageddon Knight. Then we have one Dark Hole because sometimes you might just have to clear the entire field. It's just in there. Then we play one Book of Moon because Book of Moon is pretty OP sometimes. And we play the one Archfiend Pal Labyrinth. And this is a target for your Archfiend Eris, a spell card if you need a dump, and it makes all your Inferno, all your Fiend type monsters increase in attack by 500. So it makes your arch fiends a 2300 beater, so it's not too bad. And oh yeah, and also you can use its secondary effect where you banish one other fiend monster, and then you can special summon one from your deck. And finally, we play 12 trap cards, and those are three infernity barriers. Some people like to play two, but I like having three because it's three solemn judgments. Why wouldn't you want them? And once you once you have your board ready, if you have this out, it's just too good. You lock down your opponent too hard. Then we play three Infernity Break. Infernity Break's really good, pretty much. No cards in your hand, then this card could destroy any card on the field. Just remove one Infernity card from your graveyard. Um, then we play the one Solemn Warning, because it's Solemn Warning. One Compulse, one Torrential, one Bombless one mirror force those are all self-explanatory just your basic trap lineup and then we played a one dark bribe uh, you could replace this for seven tools of the bandit it's up to you I'm testing this out um, dark bribe is just good in the sense that it can negate a spell or a trap so if your opponent wants to clear your board with something or disrupt your place midway you can use dark bribe it's a bit it's a bit more flexible. You do give your opponent plus one, but uh you do give your opponent a uh, draw, but it's still okay if you could OTK. So yeah, that's a 40 card main deck. And and for our extra deck, there's a lot of cards you could fit in this extra deck, but for sure you need to have the two Lavalo chains. Uh two is just good enough. Three you don't really need. Uh, two helps you get through your Stygians, top deck your Archfiends, whatever you need to do. Lavalo chains your man. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, I'll probably exceed into Lavalo chain first. Have my first exceed, so I can get my plays. Then we play two Diamond Direwolves. I play two because sometimes you need to use Direwolf to help clear your own field. Um, this way you could get rid of your Archfiends, so you could special summon them again with your Necromancers and plus more. Or you could pop something annoying off your opponent's side of the field. And yeah, that's why I have two Direwolves, because sometimes you really do need it. Then we play one number 66 Master Key Beetle. You can play him, because all he requires is two darks. And uh, this helps, um, it's a 2500 beater, and you can protect something if you really need, really need to. Then we play one Abyss Dweller. This is for mermails or dragons or whatever that needs the graveyard. Um, it's just in there to counter that. Then I put one Steel Swarm Roach in. Uh, just by seeing what's going on right now. Hieratics are pretty good right now. And Dragon Rulers. Hieratic Dragon Rulers. Um, so this is for that. 
Oh, and it also kind of helps against Mermouse, I guess. Then we play one Gemini Pearl, this is to get over uh, bigger stuff that you can't with all your other exceeds. So it's just having a 2600 beater as an option is good. Then we play number 50, Black Ship of Corn. Uh, gets over Zen mains pretty much. Uh, because people still do play them. And sometimes you might just need that 1000 to burn for a game. And then I have that one cowboy to help get pretty much a 3k attack when attack mode. Or this help finishes your OTKs with the extra 800. Because in most cases I would have two chains and two archfiends that attack. So that's 72. And then you just go for cowboy for the last 800. And then we pl for the rank 3s we play two Liviers. Uh, this helps recycle your Stygians. Then we play one Zen mains just for our defense if you have to. And I play for the instant fusions. I have Dark Fire Dragon and Cherubin the Fire Knight. Uh, this is your level three option, so you can go into rank three or the Dark Fire Dragon for your rank four. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it on the Infernity deck. It's a really fun deck, really fast. Uh, this deck really depends on your early game, your starting hand especially. If you have a really bad hand, if you have like five monsters in your hand, you're pretty much done. Um, unless you could grind it out. But I really like this deck because it does involve a lot of thinking and there's a lot of options you could do. Um, it's a challenge to see how, how far you could go, how much pluses you can make. And um, yeah, there's a, it's a really powerful deck, especially when you have your barriers and your breaks on and that are live. So definitely go try this deck out if you can. Uh, real, the deck is relatively budget. The most expensive card is the chain. Um, but yeah, other than that, the deck is relatively cheap. So. There's lots of different builds you can make with this deck too, like um, people play the synchro version, but honestly I like just playing the straight up exceed version. Uh, I find a synchro, the synchro version you can clog up a bit and it could be a bit slower. Even though you do get stronger monsters out, you don't really need them um, because this deck is faster and you just get your breaks, barriers, then you keep attacking with your 1800s. So yeah, that's all guys. Thanks for watching this video. Comment down below what you think about Infernities, how they're going to do. Um, also let me know if you want me to do a tutorial video on some tips and combos on playing this deck. Because there are a lot of different combos you can make. And thanks for watching. Subscribe because I post videos every Friday, every Monday. And occasionally I'll do some deck profiles. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.